In this video we're going to look at how you use double pointed needles for working in the round. Double pointed needles come in sets of four or five, in this case I'm using a set of five, and they come in all the different thicknesses that other needles do as well. So some people will have three needles in their work and they will work with the fifth, fourth, and then some people will have four and work with the fifth. This is what I do, I tend to work with four and knit with my fifth needle. This is the first time that you have worked with double pointed needles. Give yourself time. It can feel a little bit fiddly at first, but don't worry, we're going to break it down into all of the steps that you need to follow. The first thing I do is that I always cast my stitches onto a single needle, and then I distribute them over the rest of the needles. This helps me keep my needles in order, because handling four needles at once while casting on is not everybody's idea of a fun time. So the first thing I do is I do my slip knot, and then I cast on, and this time I'm going to use the same cast on that we've been using throughout Learn to Knit. So I am knitting my stitch and popping it on to my left hand needle. And I'm going to continue until I have 21 stitches. The reason I'm casting on 21 stitches is that you will have seen in the basics of knitting in the round that you can use an extra stitch when joining in the round and then knit that stitch together with the first stitch that you cast on. When I'm working with double pointed needles, I always do that because I find that it gives me very good stability from the very start. You Once I have cast on all the stitches that I want, I'm going to distribute them evenly over the double pointed needles. This works great if you have a multiple of four stitches, but if you don't, putting them on where it's generally the same number is what you're aiming for here. I take the needle that I have cast my stitches onto into my right hand and I start by distributing the first stitch that I cast on. So rather than doing it from the working end, I do it from the start of the stitches that I cast on. So I have 21 stitches, so I'm just going to slide five onto one of my needles. The reason I'm sliding on five is because I'm going to keep my extra stitch at the very end. And here you'll see I'm not twisting them or anything, I'm just slipping them from one needle to the other. Now, the key with this is to pull your needle through your stitches and place them into the middle of the needle. This is really good because it means the stitches are less likely to fall off. Then take the next needle, so now I have one needle in the work and one I'm slipping from, and I slip another five stitches onto this needle. And because you've slipped the stitches of the other needle into the centre of it, it's less likely to fall out. We're going to do that again, and you don't always have to do this, but when you're beginning it's a really good idea because if you leave them at the end, they're gonna fall off, for sure. And now I'm just going to do my last needle, so that I'm gonna have my stitches distributed over four needles. You can see you can give them a shake, and once you're cast on, once you've been working on your cast on, and you're getting good tension with your cast on, you'll find that needles don't really fall out. Once I've slipped all of my stitches on, I should have six on one and five on the other three. The extra stitch is going to be the stitch that I use for joining in the round. The next thing we're going to do is we want to make sure that our stitches aren't twisted. And a good way to do this is to lie your double pointed needles flat onto a flat surface so that they're not moving around as much. And as we checked when we were working in the basics, you want to make sure that all of the stitches are facing in the same direction, that there isn't any twist, and then you are ready to join in the round. You may take a little while to make sure that your stitches are in the correct places, but don't worry, it is a little bit fiddly when you start. Do watch for your tail and your working yarn as well. So to start off, what I do is I take that extra stitch that I cast on and I slide it onto the first needle that I put my stitches onto, making sure that my tail is not in the centre of my piece. and then I am ready to knit the two of those together. So you can see already that I now have my needles all ready to go. And that's one of the great things about having the extra stitch when you're working in the round. Again, keeping it flat on the table is really useful until you're ready to actually start knitting with your fifth needle. So now I have my fifth needle, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knit those two stitches together at the start. And that gets me joined in the round with no gaps very quickly. And I do this all the time myself when I'm knitting with double pointed needles. Even after many years of knitting with DPNs, I prefer it. You can now pick up your needles. Do it slowly, 
But now because you have arranged them while they've been lying flat, you don't need to worry that they're twisted or anything because they're all ready to go. They may feel a little bit fiddly in your hands at this stage. Don't worry. They are in the right position because you've just picked them up in that position. Working the first stitches, you do need to move the stitches back from the centre of the needle to the top, but only do that in the needle that you're about to work from. You'll find that the needles get in the way, but don't worry. Knit your two stitches together, pull it nice and snug, and now you are knitting in the round on double point needles. And then this is exactly like knitting. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, making sure that my tail is not in the way, I'm then going to pull my stitches on the first needle back into the centre so it doesn't fall out. And I'm going to continue knitting from the needle that I've just knit from. While you're doing this, you may find that the other needles are getting in your way. Don't worry, after a while you will just be able to ignore them. So you'll see that I'm just going to knit the stitches while ignoring my other needles, as if I were just knitting with two needles. Then I come to the end of that needle. So all of my stitches are now in my right needle. I slide my needle into the centre so that they're safe. I then swap my needle from my left hand where it was into my right hand. I did it by rote there because <laughs> I'm so used to doing it and you'll get into the habit of that. So it goes the empty needle that you've just knit from goes into your right hand to be knit with now. You then move up the stitches on the next left needle and you knit from that. Now be careful not to bring your yarn to the front, keep it at the backs of the needles because you're knitting in stocking stitch. You have two choices here. You can go in below the needle on the right and knit your next stitch or you can actually go in above it as well. But we're going to look at that in the next needle. So I'm going in underneath. I'm just going to knit my five stitches from my left hand needle. And again here, I knit the last stitch off, slide my stitches into the center, I swap my needle from my left hand into my right hand, and I am now ready to take the next needle into my left hand. Now, to show you what happens here is you have to make sure you're knitting from the correct end of your double pointed needle. Again, it's useful to check while you do the first few rounds that it's not become twisted on you. It can seem very obvious that it is when you look at it here, but sometimes it's not quite as obvious. So do make sure that you're knitting from the right end. It will feel quite funny if you try to knit it from the wrong end, but do keep an eye on it in case for some reason it doesn't feel funny and it feels fine. <laughs> Again, position your needles from the left needle that you're about to work from and knit those stitches onto your new needle that's in your right hand. Something that's also very common when you start working with DPNs is to just keep knitting. So sometimes you end up with all of your stitches just on one or two needles. And all you have to do then is redistribute them. There's no panic or no issue. Just make sure that you just redistribute them by sliding them around again. And now I'm going to knit these last five stitches to the end of the round. The good news is that once you've worked one round, you are joined in the round and ready to go in the same way as you are with other working in the round. And as with all knitting, you want to make sure your tail is in the correct place, so make sure it's not getting caught as you knit the round or anything, and also make sure your working yarn is in the proper place as well once you've come to the end. And here's a demonstration of how you can actually shake them around because they're all when you have your stitches in the center and they're not at risk of falling off. So it becomes much more stable. And of course, if they do fall out, all you have to do is pop them all in. Mount it correctly, as you will have seen in fixing your knits. And as long as you don't start pulling at knitting, the stitches will stay relatively stable. So don't panic if your needles fall out. And now I'm going to continue working in the round. And you can see here I've actually got my tail in the wrong place, but we won't talk about it. So you have two options for inserting your needle. You can insert it below the needle that you've just worked onto or from above. What you prefer is, is really is a personal preference. 
It depends a lot on what tension you get that's better. We'll talk about laddering later on, but this is one of the first things that you can change in your knitting to start looking to resolve that issue of laddering. It won't make sense right now, but you can see that you can get just as close in from the top as you can from the bottom. So we'll go in from the bottom this time, and you'll see that you can still pull it up nice and snugly. I go in from the bottom. I think I learned how to double point needle before I was aware that you could go in from either side and it's just something that I have stuck with and I've never changed it. But it is something that if you are new to double point needles, you can give it a try to see which way A you prefer and B where you get the better results from. Because sometimes people find going in from the top that they get a better finish than going in from the bottom. And again, I'm just going to keep working around because as we're all knitting in the round, whether it's double point needles or a long circular, it's all the same. Once you've joined once, you're ready to go. Working in the round on double point needles in a single color is the same as working the round on circular needles, except with one exception. And that is that you might get what we call ladders between where you're changing from one needle to another. And what that's caused by is tension. So it may be that when you knit that stitch as you come up to it, you knit it a bit more loosely than the stitch before and after it. And that's perfectly normal as you adjust to knitting. A lot of the time that's resolved with practice, but if not, there are a number of little tricks that you can follow to make that tension better. The first one is one we discussed before, and that is whether knitting from the bottom of the needle before or the top, so over the top of it, works better for you. You don't want to pull that stitch too tightly whether you go in or not from the top or the bottom. You want to get that as even as possible with the stitches around it. So when you're knitting, so for example here as I change needles, I want to insert my needle either from the top or the bottom, depending on which I like, and then gently snug it up against the needle, the stitch beside it that I've just knit, but not too tightly. Because if you pull it too tightly, you get the opposite issue where you get pulling in your knitting. So that's the first thing to try if you see yourself getting laddering. Try it from below the needle and above the needle to see which one works best for you. The next option is to rotate your needles so that your needle changes are not in the same place every time. So I've knit an extra stitch from my left needle onto my right needle, and that means that I have moved where my gap is going to be by one stitch. So this time I'm going to knit the four stitches remaining on my left needle, and then knit another stitch from the following needle. So again, moving the gap. Now, this works quite well for some people, but for me, I find that it just gives you a um, a helix of ladders if you're not careful. So I do recommend a lot of practice and trying the above and below the needles first. Something to mention if you are going to start rotating your stitches is that you really need to know where your start of round is. Now a lot of people use the tail of their yarn to mark where the start of round is, but if you start rotating your needles, that's very quickly going to change. So you have the option of including a removable marker along the column of stitches that mark the start of your round. The other option is to put a stitch marker between the first and second stitches, but sometimes I find it a little confusing if I don't write down which one is which, so I find a removable marker in the work is a much better place to mark your DPN start of round. That's it. There really is no mystery to DPNs. Again, it's the same as working in the round on any type of needle. You watch your stitches and your gauge and a lot of practice will make it perfect.